Why do you think people have such morbid curiosities for some of the stories? Because I listen to them, and I have to sometimes it screws with my mind a little bit. I, I stop listening, and I'm like, that kind of <laughs> fucked with me a bit. I, I, I don't feel like more positive. At, like, I'm curious about it. But, I love it, for one. But it's like Graham true crime stuff. Struggles. It's like, yeah, I do struggle with it. It's funny. Um, a lot of people that I speak to that are fans of the show or the genre, talk about it being their like comfort show, which seems totally backwards because the content literally is like 99%. Somebody dies in some horrible way. Like that's the gist of the content. But I think that as humans, there is a, there is a desire to be frightened in a safe controlled environment. And what's more terrifying than seeing real people that had something kind of random and abrupt that could happen to anyone happen to them. Someone breaks into their house or they like, you know, they go to some off limits part of a park and like they fall off a cliff or something. It's like, it feels like that could happen to me and I can learn about it and kind of almost live vicariously through this story, but I'm safe. I'm like my, my guide in this case, me is like telling me like buddy to buddy telling you a story about this horrible thing. And you get, the, you almost get like the thrill of, fear and anxiety but it's not real it's this it's the same reason we flock to like scary movies in movie theaters it's because you want to be scared but only because it's it's actually not real but your brain processes fear the same way but you're in this controlled environment so you get real fear real kind of shot of adrenaline mm. but the comfort of real safety um but i do think it's kind of like a human trait i don't think it's i don't think that the, the genre is like been forced upon people i think that humans have a morbid curiosity and I don't think that's wrong. I think it's part of being human. Do you think that seeing and experiencing obviously with your your tour or your Navy SEAL yeah. stuff and then also with like constantly being subjected to all of this like very morbid, very kind of almost like gruesome, horrific stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you think that has any effect on you in general? Sometimes it does, but it's pretty, it's pretty, I, I, I think I stay pretty disconnected from the material when I'm not like doing the job of creating content and being Mr. Ballin. Like when I'm with my kids and my wife, like I'm, I'm just John, I'm dad. It doesn't feel like one world kind of comes into the other. However, I would say when I cover stories that have distinct parallels to my own life and, and my own loved ones. It's really hard to, to like, I barely ever cover uh, content about kids getting, getting harmed because I just can't do it. It's too close to home for me. Um, I also, you know, periodically will cover, you know, I covered the story about this woman who, um, now I'm forgetting her name, unfortunately, but she was this wonderful woman in her sixties. She went hiking. She's like a great hiker, you know, did it all the time for exercise. And she got lost in this park, broad daylight. Like this is not some gnarly place mm -hmm. like in Pacific Northwest. It's like somewhere in like New Hampshire or something. Um, but she gets lost and being a seasoned hiker, she decides to stay put because she knows someone's gonna come look for her. She's got family that knows she's out here. She's gonna wait it out. And so she just sets up her camp. She's got food, she's got water and she just sits there. But unfortunately, no one ever finds her. And she says she stays there for a month and she didn't know it. She was only like less than half a mile from the trail. Um, but she didn't know she was that close. And over the course of her time in this tent where she really never moved, she, she you know, she kept a journal of each day mm -hmm. and she was just so graceful, like dealing with what was actually happening, happening to her. She clearly recognized about three weeks into her stay that she wasn't going to be found. And she now was too weak that she couldn't, she couldn't realistically attempt an escape. And so she knows she's going to die. But the way she wrote in the journal was, it was so profound. It was, all of it was for her kids, for her husband. The language was so like positive and reminding them that she's, she's fine. She's safe. You know, she's, no one's going to harm me. I'm going to pass away in my bed. But it's like the grace that she handled the ending with is just, it was incredible. And she reminded me so much of my mom. My mom, it, it was like, it, it was, it was like telling a story about my mom dying in this horribly tragic way. Uh, and that one just really messed me up. It stuck with me for a long time and it's not nearly the most gruesome story I've told. It's mm -hmm. just, it, it, it feels like I'm seeing a bit of my life mm -hmm. in this story. And those are the stories that stick with you. The one that kind of messed me up was the one actually, it was like a mall and the guy goes through this one door and gets oh, yeah. sent into this corridor where it's just like, like a catacomb of just all of these different, it's just like cement walls, cement floor, cement ceiling. And he just sits down somewhere in this chair and he never gets found. Yep. That was the one I still think about. I'm like, Jesus. I know. Man. No, that, that, yeah, that, there was like, there, there's a mall in Australia that has, it's famous. It's this huge, huge mall. 
and they have like eight miles of like, imagine here's like the, the outline of the mall, pretend it's a perfect rectangle, mm -hmm. like bordering it, but unseen to the public are all these passageways for staff and storekeepers to move around away from like the main walking areas. You can like access your store and whatever from, yeah. from anyways, but there's eight miles of it and it's really not patrolled, I suppose. There's not much, there's not cameras there and this guy was senile and he, wandered into this area and there were enough doors that were locked around him that he just sat down thinking, okay, someone's going to find me, but they didn't. And it was just like, again, just like mm -hmm. so just sad, waiting. you know? And then when he was found, he's like just hunched over on his chair, just sitting there for like a month.